Elder Millennials, what stereotype aggravates you the most? By Askredit. I hate that Millennials get pinned as being addicted to their phones. Like, always behind a screen and not interacting with the real world. I for one try really hard to have good phone etiquette and what I've noticed is, boomers can be really bad at this. Some of the older people in my office and family are the worst offenders when it comes to texting at the table or just checking out on social media. Every time my husband and I are at the airport we talk about this. Every boomer there is glued to their phone, that weird way they look down at it but also up somehow tapping away at some mindless game, often with the sound on. The sound on boomers killed me. The sound. So many old people with their phones turned to 11, playing Candy Crush, or obnoxious casino games with 10,000 sounds. Then they have the audacity to complain about young people being rude. That we don't take our job seriously. I had to sit my peer, 55 plus, down and tell him that the millennials he was bitching about were the same age as the very qualified and mission focused person he's been working with for the past decade. We're asterisk upper management. Asterisk me and colleague in story specifically, not a generalization on millennials, to clarify. I'm 35. Boss is 61. She complains about millennials. I remind her all the time that I am a millennial as are her two adult children both about my age. What's worse? Her 34-year-old daughter also complains about millennials. Apparently there are subdivisions of millennials. Come the F on. No to any 30-somethings complaining about millennials, you're not cool, you're a effing idiot. Side note. This is after I help my 61-year-old boss answer an email correctly or solve her computer problem. I get extra salty about the boomers that are constantly on their phones playing Candy Crush or reposting misinformation on Facebook, but will be the first to say we are addicted to tech. Ah, okay. Sarura. I believe that is just the shame talking because you can't make a pivot table and I can, Kevin. LOL. Yeah my parents do this, and my grandparents. When I was growing up and phones were just becoming normal they'd complain about me checking if I had messages once an hour. Now the second a single phone vibrates they all jump and ask if that was your phone or theirs, then check messages and Facebook to make sure they didn't miss something. It's almost comical. The stereotype that a lot of millennials are struggling with money because they are lazy and entitled is ridiculous. Look at the average wage versus the cost of rent, health care, and higher education now, versus what it was a few decades ago. Boomers had it far easier than we did but act like our generation's struggles just boil down to a lack of hard work. Also, the participation trophy MIM, aside from being largely bullpoo anyway, raises the question, whose generation was giving out the participation trophies? Why would you blame the kids who received them? Seriously, it's like have you ever thought that the reason you gave us participation trophies was because you were too lazy to work with your kids when they failed at something? My mom complained back when I was in college because I could not pay for college with my summer jobs saying that she paid for most of her college with her summer jobs. I am also pretty sure she used her dad's GI Bill but that's beside the point. I had to explain to her that in a good summer, I could make five grand books alone, if I bought all the ones I needed at the bookstore like she did in college, would cost two grand. My college cost considerably more than two grand, and I enjoy not starving or being homeless. But hey, almost a decade later I was fortunate enough to finish paying off my loans. Like many, I am working from home. I'll get a call from my mom, hey you are not working now, go do something for me. Thanks, working from home is wa'ari puta than going to real work, at least for me. I do fit the stereotype of hating talking on the phone. I work primarily at night. One of my jobs I generally get out at midnight. The other more like 4am. My mom acts like I don't have a job. The most ridiculous thing is she babysits my daughter overnight when I work. I love this one. 
I used to catch so much flack for sleeping so late, noon or 1, when I worked 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. When the f in hell am I supposed to sleep dad? My dad used to call me at 10 a.m., knowing fully well I prefer working nights, I'm a freelancer, and go to sleep around 6-8 a.m. He is a doctor who worked multiple nights a week his whole life, and we always had to walk on eggshells when he was sleeping it off during the day. I would never think to question this, he worked hard and had to sleep. I guess he didn't give a poo if I get to sleep though. Are you working on a computer? That's just pressing some buttons, it's not a real job. Slash S. I used to work night shift and get off work at 7am. So I'd sleep during the day and be up all night. I kept that schedule even on my days off to avoid the physical stress of switching sleep schedules. I constantly heard about me being lazy because I slept all day. Or how irresponsible it was to be up until 7 a.m. every day. Just go to eat at a normal time. I always work from home. Every single person in my life must think I just sit at home doing jack poo all day with the way everyone expects me to be free last minute for anything. Babysitting, errands, whatever. It's the most annoying thing in the world. When we are looked down upon for needing to use YouTube, etc. for learning tasks, e.g. changing a tire, that our parents were taught by our grandparents but the former never took the time to teach us. Looking down on someone for anything that they haven't yet been taught but are trying to learn is just about the stupidest thing I've heard. It's not their fault that no one had taught them the thing yet, and they are going out of their way to teach themselves. What is wrong with that? Welcome to the world of skilled trades. I was bullied and constantly told I needed thick skin to work here. Knowledge was a kept secret and you were looked down upon for not knowing, even though you were hired as the apprentice to learn from the journey persons. Mind you this was in rural East Coast. I am a trade worker in a busy metropolitan area now and it does still happen but not nearly as much. I am now the journey person and learned to do the opposite of the angry boomers that did me dirty and treat apprentices with respect and guidance. My mother never taught me household skills when I was young. When I was a teenager she insisted I do chores like loading the washing machine. Then she got mad when I asked her how the machine works, because you are a teenager you should know this. My five-year-old knows how to load and turn on both the washing machine and the dishwasher. I remember my dad screaming at me because you never do anything around the house. But when I so much as touched the washing machine I got screamed at because you don't know what you're doing and you're going to break it. So how am I supposed to do anything around the house when I'm not allowed to touch any of the cleaning appliances in case I somehow break them by using them for their intended purpose? YouTube has been able to calmly teach me everything that my dad screamed at me growing up. He will now joke about how he never thought I would be able to fix my car and house up like I do, as I had no interest in it as a kid forward slash teenager. Like no, I just hated getting yelled at for no reason. My mom was forward slash is a great teacher, which of course my dad would make fun of me for doing women's work. Nah, now I can cook and clean and fix a car thanks to mom and YouTube. Younger generation takes initiative to learn skills older generation failed to teach. I'm getting really tired of hearing about us lying around expecting handouts and not working. Especially when it's a situation where the person saying it is standing in a room with a lot of millennials, all of whom have jobs, which is every single time I've heard this said in real life. Like, who here is lying around doing nothing? Who's your example? Oh it's your neighbor's best friend's cousin's son. He doesn't have a job and lies on the couch all day. Okay. A lot of millennials I know have multiple jobs, including monetizing their hobbies, and still just barely getting by. And those of us that don't, it's usually for reasons beyond our control. I've literally never met a single person in my entire life that wanted to sit around doing nothing all day. That poo destroys your soul and kills you from the inside out. 
source, I'm a disabled millennial who literally can't do anything all day. It is not a life you would choose to live. Trust me. Also a disabled millennial, and not being able to hold a job sucks. I keep myself busy by being treasurer of a charity, all done from my bed, online studying, knitting and crocheting, which all goes to my nieces and nephews or to NICU at my local hospital, and I've just taken up sewing and am hoping to sew rice heating packs as a fundraiser for the charity. All things that make me feel I'm contributing to society which I can do from my bed. ETA, thank you everyone for the kind comments and all the awards. It truly wasn't necessary, but thank you nonetheless. I haven't done this, but I always want to point out that hey, you must be talking about your own pooty kids that you raised and their friends. My peers that I know aren't like that. And it is. It's always some upper middle class jerk that raised awful children. Ugh. I once heard a superb sentence in a discussion between a 16 yo and a 40 yo on a climate protest. We're not responsible for how we were raised. Your generation is. I have used that sentence quite often since then. As an American, it's basically that we're inheriting a system that nobody trusts us to run. All the people who represent us are two to three times older than us, the older generations are refusing or unable to retire which is preventing us from actually entering the job market. We currently have the most geriatric congress in US history. The boomers refuse to concede power and continue to be elected as they still have sheer numbers on X, Y, and Z. That however will change by 2024 with a relatively even amount and by 2028 most boomers will be too feeble or will have passed away to be able to make it to the polls. I hate to break it to you but in 2028 the oldest boomers will be 83 while the youngest will be 63. There'll be less of them, but a huge contingent of them will still be working and an even larger contingent will be able to vote. Also boomers live in swing states disproportionately so they'll get a bigger say than you or me. This is also preventing us from entering the housing market. What do you mean? There's plenty of options. Like that $300k 2 bed 1 bath with broken windows and a cracked foundation being sold by a boomer that knows what he has. The use of the term millennial to refer to the general young person. As a younger millennial, I hate PPL bringing up that I eat Tide Pods. PPL my age were out of college and in the working world by the time TikTok challenges were a thing. I'm mid-30s and have had a boomer try to use that to invalidate all of my arguments. Yeah well at least my generation never ate soap mine didn't either, and if some of them had, that wouldn't say anything about me. Edit, I don't dislike all baby boomers. My late father was one and he was great. The guy from the conversation was trying to claim the fact that he was a boomer made him better than everyone else in the discussion. Not in so many words, of course. I attacked his points, he attacked my generation. The boomers are the ones that made their kids eat soap if they cursed lol. Boomers are also the ones who said don't believe everything you read on the internet and then go and believe everything they read on the internet. Technically it's like 39 year olds to 22 year olds. That range needs to be split in two. I'm 35 and don't know WTF the 26 year olds I work with are talking about half the time. I'm 31. You'd Fortnite on God, bet fam. He speaks the language of the gods. Hello fellow kids, how do you do? When people call teens and early 20s millennials. That was like 10 to 15 years ago. I've seen old people refer to Generation X members down to junior high students as millennials, it just means, person under 50 who I don't like, apparently. Yeah, as an early 40s genser, sometimes my year 4 students call me a boomer. Usually when they show me something on Reddit they think I don't know about. Yeah, I'm 34, my son is as close to the age boomers think a millennial is as I am. This. It's so aggravating that people use millennial as a slur for any spoiled naive youth. I'm a 39-year-old elder millennial with back pain. 
The youngest millennials are in their mid-twenties. It's pedantic but it drives me up the wall how lazy people seem to assume anyone younger than they are is a millennial. I'm sure my Gen X brother doesn't enjoy being called a boomer. Call my 19 year old a boomer today. Don't remember why, but she absolutely sounded like my mom in bitching about some kid thing. Can verify no one likes being called a boomer. It's funny to do though. Okay Boomer is super effective at infuriating just about anyone, regardless of age. I, for one, am tired of hearing about the things we've killed. Tastes change all the time, this is not new. There's an anecdote that JFK killed the hat industry hats used to be a staple of American men's fashion. There were dedicated hat shops. Then JFK came along with his public image of a suave man with impeccable hair. Hats vanished from the mainstream fairly quickly, and the fedora has never recovered. Story goes that this was based, at least partially, by the movements of 68 in Germany, and perhaps other parts of Europe too. Our fathers wore hats, so we sure as hell did not when we left the house for a protest. And the fedora has never recovered you shall see spreading blatant misinformation, kind sir, lest I lose my temper and challenge you to a duel. Tips Fedora. Emla Nile. I remember seeing one that was millennials are killing payday loans and trying to imagine thinking payday loans are a good thing. But where else can I get loans with 400% April? We're killing payday loans. We're effing heroes. I think it's interesting, also if industries can't keep up or offer a good service then they should die. The boomers also killed stuff, they killed radio dramas with TV and their grandparents killed the carriage industry by buying cars. Also, video killed the radio star. I think Gen X gets the blame for that one. Next up, are millennials killing brick and mortar stores? Waiting for the did millennials kill GameStop, article. Wasn't that the hedge fund short ladder ninjas? Because we're not buying houses let alone new houses adapt or die bitch it cracks me up when i see an article about something we killed they don't happen much anymore sadly i think they either realized their target demographic is millennials or they realized that a business's inability to keep up with the times can't be laid at our feet probably the first one though it's actually interesting emo We've got to have one of the most discriminating tastes of any generation in a long time. We just don't settle for POL we're not happy with if there are other options that suit our tastes better. And what does that mean? Sorry cable, streaming is better. Sorry garbage chain restaurants, smaller niche restaurants are better. Sorry napkin industry, I've got a roll of paper towels. Sorry Harley Davidson. I've never seen nor do I connect with Easy Rider. Sorry cruise industry, gross. We have an unprecedented level of choice and information. In previous generations, what you purchased was limited to what was available in your local area. Now we can search the world, find exactly what we want and have it delivered tomorrow, so why settle? We have an unprecedented level of choice and information. In previous generations, what you purchased was limited to what was available in your local area. Now we can search the world, find exactly what we want and have it delivered tomorrow, so why settle? Exactly. We are not picky, other generations were just settling for whatever poo was put in front of them cause they had fewer options available. We were raised and became adults during a time where consumers had more options. Funnily enough my wife and I have switched both of our parents to Roku forward slash Chromecast and streaming services and not cable. Seeing our Hulu forward slash Sling forward slash Netflix forward slash Disney and package for tilde $80 forward slash MVS their cable packages for $220 forward slash M was a simple choice. Especially seeing as how the bulk of the channels on cable are filled with BS that you never watch. I had to go on a business trip and work with an older lady who was just about ready to retire. 
I manage trade shows and travel around North America to convention centers and hotels organizing events. She had an old school way of checking inventory by hand. I'm pretty good with Excel and Salesforce, so I had a faster way of doing it. I got the job done like I've been doing for years and left so I could go enjoy Vancouver. We've all heard the saying work smarter, not harder. She couldn't get it through her head that the work day was done for me. I found out from another colleague that she called me a lazy entitled millennial with no work ethic. So that's the stereotype I hate. I busted my ass and paid my way through college. I worked long hours and kissed ass to get to the position I'm in. I know plenty of other young professionals that have done the same. This idea from baby boomers that we're entitled or lazy gets tiresome. Edit, I didn't expect this to blow up overnight. I should mention what happened to her I guess. When we returned from the trip, I guess the organization holding the event complained about her for having a nasty attitude. They asked that we send someone different for the next trade show. I wasn't the only one that had issues working with her. The company ended up paying her off to just retire a few months later. And for all you Canadians messaging me if I enjoyed Vancouver, before the pandemic I would travel every other week to a different city and Vancouver is one of my favorite places I've been. I love your country. When borders open back up I'll be taking a vacation to Montreal. In my office if you finish the arduous tasks you are given early, they just expect more work. They don't care about the quantity or quality just that you punch in for 8 hours a day. Now that I work from home, I have a much better balance because no one can see me effing around when I finish my tasks early. Just because it takes me 4 hours to do what takes my boomer co-workers 8 hours to do, doesn't mean I should have to do more than them. I currently have the highest stats on my team, I am also the only millennial, and when I finish my work I'm expected to pick up the slack for my co-workers who can only type 30 words a minute with a 75% accuracy rate. Yet. I'm the lazy and entitled one because I have more downtime. 40 hour work week feels like stone age by now. And it's the older people controlling that. Old person here. Please kill the 40 hour work week. We tried, but failed spectacularly. This is the one chance for us to do it. Once we start going back to the office, everyone should really renegotiate their hours and days. And as long as you were efficient while working from home, their only argument can be that they've rejected your request because well, they just effing want to. I kept my hours on my time sheet as close to accurate as possible. Not once did work approach me about sometimes having a 4 hour day or a 14 hour day. As long as my work got done, they didn't care. If we started acting like our companies were lucky to have us instead of us lucky to have them, we would actually get to have a balance without sacrificing quality of work. I know it's a rough mindset to have because as a female in STEM, it's as if I'm expected to be grateful for being employed and not sitting at home cleaning the house. F that, I worked hard and am blessing work with my talent and skill. I'm getting myself all hyped up now and I'm fixing to ask for more PTO, F it. I work a second job as well. Hence why I hate the 40 hours when I do nothing for at least 10 of them. Oh god, this. With the pandemic it's become clear, even for boomers, that in many jobs you don't need 8 hours a day to get stuff done, while at the same time things still get done. Getting stuff done fast and then having to look busy for the rest of the day is both soul crushing and absurd. If only they didn't somehow magically ended up working 24-7, late at night and on weekends to accomplish the same damn work, like on my last job. I think they were lied to, the way we were lied about how life is supposed to work, though. They were told that work equals virtue. And it is absolutely not true. My mother-in-law called me lazy after I spent my vacation busting my ass helping her get rid of her heaps of junk because I was faster and more efficient than she was. 
Then my dad called my husband lazy for sleeping into 10 a.m. after he was up all night grinding concrete floors by himself. Both of them just got defensive when we called them out on it. We don't do any type of project with them now. Cause you know, we're lazy. Older generations just refuse to accept any work slash sleep schedule that doesn't equal their up at 6, bed by 10 standard. Work to effing 2 a.m. You are still lazy if you are not getting up at 6. If you wanted 8 hours of sleep, then you should have gotten a day job. Even if you're the one getting their food or bagging their groceries late at night and they bitch that there's no one working, those workers should still be up at 6 a.m. or they're lazy. Never mind that being sleep deprived is incredibly bad for your health, according to old people, there's an entire class of people that's supposed to suffer sleep deprivation to serve them late in the evening and still meet their standards of not lazy. My mum used to rage at me if I ever had a lie-in. Like, sleeping past 9 am for any reason, even if I was sick, was the worst thing in the world and I was entitled and lazy. Wow, that brings back some memories. I was never late or missed school, I worked as well. Holy crap, even on the days she was at work and me at home she would call the house phone to make sure I was up and cleaning the house, washing the clothes etc on my days off. She was at work so I had to work and be up with her. Drove me bunkers. I would stay up till around 2 am, then sleep till 10 during the summer. I worked afternoon slash evenings. Sometimes after work and before school I needed to unwind. Sometimes I didn't have to be until second class so I could have a lie-in. Not on her watch. Being exhausted all day was somehow my fault. I should have gone to bed earlier, I was just lazy. I spent my time catching up on schoolwork or in the holidays before uni, chatting with my internet friends because she wouldn't let me out of the house to see anyone. She actually popped my bike's tires to stop me riding around. This was after kicking me out of the house every summer until I was around 15 and told to go ride my bike. Then suddenly when I started befriending other kids my age I wasn't allowed out anymore. To her, I was only allowed to clean the house all day for her if I wasn't at work and nothing else. I was so lazy because I had days off in the week and worked weekends instead. I worked the shifts I worked because I could get time and a half and double time pay and make more than her a shift, which pissed her off. Wasn't allowed to pick up overtime though. She would lose it if I told her I was going to be driven home by a colleague. She had to pick me up. I wasn't allowed to go anywhere or do anything without her say. Then I was lazy for not working enough. Bro, it's the worst of all the stereotypes. I'm 38 and graduated in 2000 so I'm pretty much the first year of the millennial generation. I still get people telling me that I'm entitled, despite having close to 20 years work experience in my field. Like seriously. I have quit so many jobs and gone to work for other companies for more money because I'm not willing to, wait for it. Like get the f out of here you broke ass boomer just ignorance. Sacrifice all your free time or you're lazy. Slash s. Why aren't you using my inefficient, out-of-date method? You must be a goddamn bum. We can't afford houses because apparently we spend too much on avocado toast. No, in the 80s and 90s houses were about three to four times the average annual income. Now it's close to 10, at least in my part of the world. My dad bought a house in an inner Melbourne suburb in the 70s for $90,000. It's valued today at over $2 million. He bought it on about three years worth of wages, with no university debt. I have two degrees, work full time, and I couldn't even buy a pretty one bedroom apartment with six years worth of wages, let alone a house on three. When someone makes mention of some challenge teenagers are doing like eating Tide Pods and people are like ugh, millennials. Um, no. Just because 4 to 5 people did something stupid and then the news decided to take it and run with it and make it sound way more widespread than it is, 
doesn't mean you get to generalize a whole generation. Secondly, millennials are practically the age of the parents of the TikTok generation. It's not a generic term for any young person doing something you don't like. The Tide Pod one makes me so angry. Yeah, I can only afford store brand. Kirkland Signature Pod Challenge doesn't have the same ring to it. Kirkland brand actually tastes better though. I personally love getting accused of the snorting of condoms to go along with the Tide Pods. They love that gotcha. At least I don't get suckered by everything posted to Facebook like it's the written word of God Grandpa. Or sharing pictures of missing kids who have been found for 5 years and are now 19. That we're entitled. Having worked with the general public for over a decade, I can assure you the overwhelming majority of entitled and rude behavior comes from the over 50s crowd. Edit. Also they keep telling us to be more financially responsible but when we are they like no, not like that. Can't wait to tell my judgmental extended family that I'm having a backyard wedding because I don't have 30k just lying around, my parents are already pissed about it. Stop wasting money going out to eat and be financially responsible. Millennials are killing the pudi restaurant industry omg. Seriously. When the last one of us dies there's going to be articles like, are millennials killing the funeral industry? It probably will be, because we are one of the first generations to really understand it's a full-blown sham. It's just that most of us haven't gotten to the dying age yet edit, I see this gained a little traction overnight and a lot of people are saying they want to just be chucked in a hole or a body of water, and I just wanted to let you know that you can, kinda. Ask a Mortician on YouTube did a video about Ica burials here so feel free to check it out if you want to take down the funeral forward slash burial industry. Ignoring the fact that millennials can barely pay for rent, let alone a $3,000 box that'll go six feet underground. Stop wasting money and be financially responsible. What do you mean you're not ready to have kids yet? The works secretary where I work almost flipped her POO when I asked her why they still force old school financial thinking on us when it is clearly not working. A lot of boomers going into pension have low levels of life satisfaction, how do they expect us to enjoy any at all if we are expected to deny ourselves while in working age by putting as much as 20% of our TGP into our pension funds? I can't afford to go on vacations to nice places anymore, the diesel cost alone is sky high. I live in a country where we don't fly everywhere. My parents are going on pension in July. They'll move 1,300 kilometers, about 800 miles, from where I am. Just getting there and back again will cost me about $270 US in gas money, which is about a fifth of what I take home at the end of the month. I barely save that a month after all my deductions. When my parents were my age they had two kids, a large house, a caravan, and a boat. I have a tent that I inherited. We are not in the same boat. As someone whose boomer mom demanded I have a large wedding and then when I said no and she said but I'll pay for it and I took her up in it like an idiot, good job. My parents needed a new roof on their house but instead they paid for my wedding and then my mom guilted me about it for, ever. My dad offered to give a considerable amount for my wedding. And I thought that was that. And then he gave me a list of his friends that he wanted to invite to the wedding. I told him I only wanted to invite people that I know. Duh. Anyway, after I said that he basically threw a tantrum and said he won't come to my wedding if I didn't invite his friends. I stood my ground but after I just cried cause he'd f and choose his friends over his own daughter. I'll be married two years already and he still always mentions it to me why I didn't invite his friends. Edit, wow, didn't expect all the upvotes and comments. Just to explain further, my family and I are really close so I was shocked, along with my mom and sister, when my dad went crazy like that. I'm such an introvert that I wanted my wedding to be intimate, just the people who are close to me. Mind you, I invited some people in my dad's list who I did know but I couldn't invite everyone since I didn't want such a big wedding. I thought we were over it already but just recently my sister told me my dad kept complaining cause he said he gave me money anyway. I really wanted to just give him his money back so he can shut up about it, 
but my sister told me to just let it go, might make matters even worse. My cousins all had their weddings paid for by their parents. I was not given that gift from mine. My grandfather didn't approve of me getting married at a bed and breakfast with only 10 guests. He hounded me for months about including random relatives, I stood my ground. He ended up leaving after the ceremony and wouldn't join us for dinner, he had asked my brother for a ride to the wedding, so my brother, his wife, their two kids and my grandparents all left before dinner. I invited 10 people to my wedding and only half stayed until the end. My father never even came. But, we've been married for 10 years. We always thought we'd have another big wedding, but now, what? Who cares? What a waste of money that would feel like. This sort of behavior is why my girlfriend has outright said we are not getting married until her grandma is dead. A backyard wedding sounds lovely, less fuss and contracts to deal with. More things on your own terms and timelines. If family is upset you're not having a lavish wedding, look up some venues and catering you like and say they can gladly pay for it. That people don't own a house because they're lazy. I have taken the time to explain the loss of buying power, stagnant wages, automation, contract employees, lack of job security, cost of living in other areas, etc. play way more into it. My boomer dad is one of the good ones, took him a while to understand the sheer magnitude of disadvantages his kids will be facing but he finally gets it. My sister and I don't point at him and say told you so, because you can tell on his face that he's very sad. It's one of the few things that makes my hard as nails dad upset. He can't believe everything that we're dealing with and he really started to understand it when he needed to look for work between jobs, he's self-employed but it was a slow year and he had a six month gap between projects and needed to earn an income in the meantime. He was utterly bewildered with the job search. I've been self-employed longer than you've been alive, what more do I need to prove to these people? I remember him being so offended when he went to see a manager at a local auto body shop and they asked him for a resume lol I've been doing this for almost 40 years, and they just tell me to apply online. Online. I've owned shops longer than he's been living. That's when my dad started to show a lot more sympathy to our job searches and hasn't been so hard on us. But what makes him so sad is that our buying power is just pathetic compared to this. He bought a home in 1994 $110,000, 3 bedroom, at $15 forward slash hour. And my mother never had to work while raising us. My dad can't believe how things are now. Had this talk with my parents yesterday. They fought tooth and nail yesterday that I can't keep looking at the past cause that's past. It's like they realized how effed up it is today and just don't want to feel responsible. They started off how they made like 5 euro backslash h when they started. I asked them how much a bread was back then and how much now. It was 0, 0,30 euro. They just didn't want to understand that 15 euro backslash age now isn't that much more compared to the 70s as a bread costs 2,5 euro now. They had a hard time understanding wages rose about 20% while life cost rose 400%. I hate that argument, I only made this much money when I was younger, like people don't understand inflation at all. I was complaining about minimum wage a few years ago and my mom said, well I only made $2 an hour at my first job, and then I had to point out to her that 2 bucks back then is $15 slash HR now. My mom did this to me when I got married. She was trying to be encouraging saying when I married your father I only made $X forward slash year. I forget what the amount was. I just recall that when I adjusted the number for inflation it was way more than I was making. I work at a law firm. One of the senior attorneys tried to tell me that young people today shouldn't be complaining about wages because when he got his first job as an attorney he only made $15k a year. That was in the early 1960s. Today, 
that salary is equivalent to $132K. That's over 2.5 times what I make. He was able to buy a house and support a wife and two children on his salary, where I and my husband both work and still aren't able to afford the down payment on a house. But heaven forbid we have a problem with it. God I was getting paid $6.25 forward slash hour in 2006, and your dad was getting $5 forward slash hour in the 70s. Late in the 70s like 79, but still. They also don't understand that production now is already 20% higher than it was in 2000. It's amazing how blind they are to it all. They paid their house at 80k euro plus 20k in renovation costs in 2000 while I paid mine which is half theirs in size 147k plus 40k, renovations everything new, in 2013. My parents luckily understand the situation we're in completely and are actually sad for us, because they have fond memories of finding their dream home themselves. The house my brothers and I grew up in. But that house also just about tripled in price in the 30 or so years that they've lived there. My younger brother and his so, despite making way more than my parents ever did, would only just be able to afford that house if they got the biggest mortgage they could find. Finding a house no longer is an exciting and special experience. You're not looking at a place to love. Buying a house now is an exercise in compromise and disappointment. Finding the least poo place you're willing to try and lock yourself into a mortgage for the next 30 years for. And as you go on, you're constantly forced to lower your standards even further as you keep getting overbid on anything you're remotely interested in. Thank you for watching. We upload new videos every day, so be sure to come back for more fun. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed the video.